Today, I'm going to be talking about Unity founder Charles Fillmore's Powers of Man. I just like to say, if he were with us today, I'm sure he would say of humanity and include all of us. <laughs> the idea is to study, meditate, and affirm one of the 12 powers for one entire month. For the month of January, he prescribes that we meditate and affirm on the power of faith. The color he suggested for the power is dark blue, hence our background, trying to be with the theme. Film, Fillmore <clears throat> also relates each power to one of the 12 disciples. The disciple connects with faith this week. Faith, the apostle Peter. We remember, some of us, the biblical story of Jesus asking Peter to come to him, to walk to him on the sea. And when Peter started walking on the water, the wind came up and Peter began to sink and cried out, save me, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him saying, Oh, you of little faith, you did doubt. Can you remember a time when you were given news that simply rocked your world? Perhaps you were seated quietly at home and the phone rang and you received news that changed everything in one instant. He passed away. She gave birth. You got the job. I called to apologize. I'm just calling to tell you, I love you. And in a millisecond, nothing is the same. And yet, everything is still the same. You're in the same chair in your comfortable room with the same phone in your hand. What is different is the way in which we now process this information because our view has shifted. Shifted your view of what is possible. Shifted your view of your place in the world and of what you can count on never changing or what you thought might never be. It's not just earth shattering news that can cause us to shift our view. It turns out that this is a God given gift that we all receive. We all have choice to be willing, willing to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, willing to let go of only one way of seeing the world, allowing for a new view. We each choose 
what we believe is true and unchanging. We each can define our own faith in what is possible. Charles Fillmore called faith our perceiving, our perceiving power. And January is devoted to faith, just as its representative disciple, Peter, was called first by Jesus. His faith tested. Faith begins our calendar year. And if we are choosing to put on 3D glasses, we can put on the lenses to filter the view we have of our daily lives. Not everybody realizes the power of choice they have, or if they do, are unsure of what to do with it. In unity, we place our faith on one presence, one power. And how does that shift our view of the world? To have faith that a spark of the divine lives in and through each of us. Let me say that again. To have faith that a spark of the divine lives in and through each and every one of us. To have faith that we are never really separated from source and that the kingdom of God is at hand. Can you summon up a moment in your life when you had a felt experience of the sense of deep connection? A peak experience of oneness with God of being in the right place at the right time, of being right with the world, having a felt sense of the presence of God, of God moving through you as you, here and now, wherever you are. See, see if you can call up a memory, or if you can, can't, see if you can project yourself forward in time to a place where you might feel that kind of sense of connection and of God's flowing energy prevailing. bringing a sense of good unfolding here and now in this moment. And now, gently coming back to this room, to this service, to our beloved ones. Does the memory let linger in your heart, within your heart space, like ripples on the waters of your very being? Can you still detect the ripples of peace, of safety? 
and the feeling of being in harmony with life itself. Take a deep breath and with me bless this moment, bless this moment, this moment of being here now and yet opening, being willing to open to so much more and calling it all good. If I could take that feeling and can it and sell it, it'd be worth a million dollars. And if I could take that feeling and live it from that place forevermore, each and every day, my friends, well, I wouldn't need the millions of dollars, I dare say. I'd probably decide to give it all away. <laughs> Make sure it went to the right home. That it was managed from a place of goodness and continuity through God's love. Because the master teachers tell us that it's not really so much about what we are doing, doing in our physical experiences. It is what we are feeling and seeing and striving to do that counts so very much. It's not so much what comes to us, my friends, but how we perceive them, how we choose to interpret them and the meaning we give to them. The Kartali reminds us, it's not so much what we are doing, but how, how we are doing it. Not so much what the news is from the telephone call that rocks our world, but what filter of faith we use to move through the experience to accept the news unexpected. Not so much what we choose to do in our lives, but how we perceive it, how we connect all the dots of our experiences and what filter of faith that all outer events pass through before we need to respond outwardly. Can you maybe think of an experience, a, a bit of news that you received that left you wondering, where is God in all of this, in suffering? and war and torture and natural disasters and resentments and illness and silly squabbles over nothing. Where is God in all of that? In unity's belief system, nearer than our hands, nearer than our own breath, is always the very presence of God. But God can only do for us what we are willing to let God do through us. 
we can get caught up in this earthly place of, of being and doing and times and rules and everything else that gets in our way. And then we come to love, expressing love, feeling love completely. And we remember. We remember that here and now it may seem like we have feet of clay, but God sees our perfection. God knows the truth of who we really are. We can get caught up in our egos, fighting for survival at any cost or anybody else's, having a sense of separation despite our soul's yearning for all that is. Or we can perceive a deep sense of separation or an invitation to join. Look for that. Look more deeply beyond the realm of the finite limits, the boundaries of space and time, and find your yes. Find that place where you feel truly free to be who you are, to offer the world the gifts that you have to give the boundless, infinite potential, the unlimited fields of energy awaiting your recognition, awaiting your imagination and bringing it into the world. Remember, remember God's beloved child. We read in the Bible that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Christ was said to have expressed that perfection, showing us that the kingdom is at hand. And when we grow still enough and silent enough, we begin to remember this is our practice time and again to turn our back on that which no longer feeds us, to go into our heart space where love dwells. Time and again, use the filter of faith to give greater meaning to the world around us we call it practicing the presence, gently reminding ourselves that there is not a spot where God is not, where we need not traipse the world over to find that which we seek. We find it within. The divine in me bows and recognizes the divine in you, my friends. Namaste. Namaste.